Absolutely. Uh, as President Mary Pat mentioned, um, we have been doing a uh, nod to our history, our, our great history, 50 plus year history of West Jacks uh, every week uh, with a short take on uh, uh, past president's years. Uh, this week, we're going to do a longer take, about 10 minutes each, on two special years with two special Rotarians that have been very important to us and to our club. Ken Baker and Scott Emery are going to uh, share about their years. Um, I'm not sure who wants to go first. Do we line that up? Ken, Scott? Okay. Doesn't matter to me, Scott. Ken, you're elected. Ken, uh, Ken okay. elected. Then we'll kick off, and then Scott will yeah. play. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's only been 38 years since I joined Rotary, so uh, I guess that's one of the, the things you get when you've been in it your whole life, or half of it anyway. Um, my year was 1994-95. Back then, um, we had printed bulletins, of course. We um, bound those bulletins, and at the end of the um, rotary year I got a, a nice book that that was all of the bulletins for the year um, and that's it when I finally get my screen to work properly Patty are, are you um, helping me share this um, I, I think if you go to slideshow, click that, and then you should be able to click um, start from beginning. At yeah, I can't, of, I can't seem to get out of... Um, at the top of the screen, it says slideshow. Keep going, across, across, across. Well, I can't see it because... Let me try to... Marshall might be more help than me, really. Marshall? Marshall, you got any idea? Yeah, sorry, I was, I was muted. Um, I just, okay, there we go, ready? Uh, I think I got it, there you go. There you go. Start from beginning. There you go. There you go. Anyway, that's what that's what the um, the book looked like, and the big help for me for this presentation was I could look back at the book and and remember the year and and pick out the things that I wanted to share with you. Um, first, I wanted to talk about what was going on in the country. I asked us to to give a little perspective on that. It was Bill Clinton's first year as president. That's a long time ago. Uh, in baseball, the World Series was canceled due to a player striking. Uh, who could forget that was the time of O.J. Simpson's trial. The um, jury was selected and November of 94, the verdict came back in October of 95. So it took up just about the whole year of Rotary. Uh, the sitcom Friends debuted in 1994. Cost of gasoline was um, $1.05. A new car cost $15,000. And for those of you that could have invested in 1994 with Amazon, your $1,000 investment would be worth a million eight today. So um, exciting times. Uh, locally, the, the Jaguars were just coming about. Um, the team was awarded a franchise in October of 93. Coughlin was hired in 94. There was a lot of buzz in Jacksonville, obviously, about the Jaguars, the players, the draft. Um, the stadium, um, which was basically torn down, although I guess officially it was renovated, uh, causing the Georgia-Florida game to be in Gainesville in 94 and in Athens in 95. Uh, it didn't matter a whole lot. Florida won 52-14 to 14 in Gainesville and 52-17 to 17 in Athens. So. Um, it was a great time to be a Gator, but not a Bulldog. Um, Rotary's theme that year was be a friend. Uh, it's kind of a simple thing. It, it kind of didn't, to me, didn't have a whole lot 
about Rotary involving it. And then I read where Rotary National President that year, Bill Huntley from England, said this about the theme. He said, you don't need to be a formal cause to be a Rotarian, but if you are a friend, you will be a Rotarian in the true sense of the word. And, and that was meaningful, and it, it, it was, it especially was meaningful to me as I look back now and see the people that were involved that year, uh, served on the board uh, and as committee chairs. Uh, we had 145 members in our club that year. Our board consisted of Jerry Herzog, um, who was vice president. He was executive vice president for Scott McRae. Um, he passed away a year or so after he was a Rotary Club president. Um, so that, that, was, uh, that was a sad time. Um, Marty Stack was secretary. What a great guy. You know, we all love Marty. And, you talk about a great secretary for our club. He, he kept things in line. Bill Phillips was treasurer. Um, he, was, he was president after Marty, and he was a former IBM sales executive and a great guy. Um, he passed away within the last um, six or eight months. Cecil Gibson was sergeant in arms, and as you know, Cecil went on to be a great district governor. Clint Dawkins was community service director. Like Cecil, he went on to be another great district governor from our club. John Runyon was club service director, and John could have been a district governor if he wanted to. He certainly um, was qualified. I think he just had too much work to try to get done. Uh, and finally, uh, Carol Mann, was the international service director. Um, he's a great guy. He was, he was, you know, kind of a quiet guy, but he, he just did a great job for us that year. And finally, Tom Watson was vocational service director. And you'll hear throughout my little presentation how much Tom did for the club back then. That was 26 years ago. Uh, outstanding members that joined that year were Dr. Scott Emray, Jimmy Kelly, Vince Cole, and our first active Rotarian female um, member was Dr. Laura DeJean. Uh, Tilly Fowler was actually uh, in our club, but she was an honorary member. Uh, so it was, it was, it was an honor to, um, to have, to be president and, and to have Laura join our club that year. Rod Kidd was a recipient of the J.J. McCraney Award, Dr. Mark Frost, won the Robert T. Shirkliff Award. Jerry McCool was district governor-elect that year. We were so excited about him being the district governor the following year. It had been 25 years since our club had had a district governor. We recognized 55 members that year for at least one year of perfect attendance. We recognized um, and honored the memory of Jack Evans, a member of our club, who in his estate planning left $1 million to the Rotary Foundation. Our meetings, um, this, this was in my bulletin book. Uh, we could have allowed, we allowed smoking at the meeting. Um, smokers usually sat at a particular table or two. Uh, I wanted to look that up um, to see if that was really legal at the time, and it was. Um, smoking was not banned in a restaurant setting like that until 2000. Some of the programs that we had, uh, Mary Bear from Channel 4 had just moved to Jacksonville. She was probably in her mid-20s or so. She was absolutely delightful. Um, she's a great speaker. Mayor Ed Austin spoke to us. He loved coming to our Rotary Club and seeing his friends like Bill Gay and Lou Brantley and Bob Shercliffe and so many other um, members of our club. Uh, this was Captain Voss before he was in the Rotary Club with us. Um, he and Admiral Tom Watson arranged for our first VIP Blue Angels program at NAS, and we had a wonderful time. A uh, tradition that still goes on today. Doug Mignoni spoke to us twice. The first meeting of the year, he spoke to us on volunteerism, and the next time he spoke to us was his program titled The American Dream. Jeremy Foley was a speaker of ours. He was athletic director at Florida at the time. Um, 
we had our first career day of Lee High School organized by Admiral Tom Watson and Ed Pratt Daniel, who was president at Lee High School at the time. We had over 90% of our members participate. Admiral Watson assigned two Rotarians to each classroom, he gave us all the list of um, who the Rotarians were in each class, the teacher's name, the class. So you pretty much had to be there um, for that event at Lee. It was, it was a great event. Um, I was concerned that we couldn't pull it off, but I didn't know Tom Watson that well at the time. We, along with other Jacksonville Rotary Clubs, participated in a program to bring Korean children with heart defects to Jacksonville for an operation to correct those defects. Here's a picture of Clayton Riley with Song Dong, who stayed at Clayton's home while returning to Jacksonville for a follow-up visit. Probably the, the most exciting thing we, we had that year among a, a bunch of great things that, that I think our, our members accomplished was we decided to step out and do kind of an expensive fundraiser. Um, we were going to do a reverse raffle at the River Club. Um, each member was asked to purchase two tickets for $125 a piece. If we sold all those tickets, that would have given us $37,000, which in today's money is about $65,000. So that was a big deal. Um, a lot of hard work. The raffle winner would receive $10,000. The charity, which we had already designated as the Boy Scouts, would receive $10,000, and the rest of the money would go to pay for the party. Um, the charity fundraising committee was chaired by Bob Kidd, um, that's his pre-COVID look. Uh, he did a great job. Um, he, he promoted and sold and sold and sold and sold um, the event for us. Cecil Gibson and um, Mike Corrigan were in charge of the raffle process, a skill learned through the Catholic upbringing, I'm sure. Um, Bob Shercliffe was in charge of corporate ticket sales. The, Fundraising committee met every week, up, you know, probably for two or three months prior to the event to see where we were on ticket sales. I think it was with about a week to go. We still had about 60 tickets to try to sell. Um, it was panic time for me. Um, I don't know about anybody else, but I was quite concerned. Um, and when we were meeting, Bob Shercliffe raised his hand, and I thought, wow, were we smart to put Bob on this committee, so he's just going to say that he'd buy the rest of the tickets up and give them to his friends and go. Uh, I never will forget what he said. Um, quote, he said, when the cart is in the ditch, we all need to get out and push. That was it. You know, he didn't offer to buy any more tickets. He just said we needed to work harder which we did, we sold all the tickets. Um, so 299, the last ticket of the 300, um, we raffled off when there were only five tickets left to, to draw from. And Big Mike Corrigan paid $1,300 for one of those tickets. As it turned out, he and Jimmy Lanier's sister, Dr. Lanier from Gainesville, were the last two ticket holders, they decided just to split the $10,000. So in about 15 minutes, Mike turned $1,300 into $5,000. Um, probably still doing that today. Um, but we did have a good time. Uh, Deborah Giannolis and her husband, David Hill, who was a past Rotary Scholar, really enjoyed um, being with us. They added a lot to the, to the program. Um, and the fellowship of 300 Rotarians and guests was, was just outstanding. We had a great time. The, um, uh, Jimmy still says that Linda got his ticket and that she got his, but she denied that. So Jimmy lost out on, on that deal. Uh, the Boy Scouts got their um, grant from us. Um, they built an activity shelter at, at Shan's Camp. And, um, and it was, um, it was a good event. Um, we had a good time. We did the same thing the following year when Jerry 
Herzog was president. Um, I think we went to the Army that year. It was a very similar program with the reverse raffle. We ended the year with 143 members. Our members were involved and continued an outstanding percentage of attendance at over 80. It was a wonderful group of Rotarians who lived into the theme of the a friend. Um, just wrap up by saying I, I thank Rotary for giving me the opportunity to, to serve our local community and our, our rural community. Um, I thank Rotary for allowing me to be friends with other Rotarians literally from all over the world. Um, I hope each of you experience what I have had through Rotary. Um, may God bless Rotary and bless the Rotary Club of West Jackson. Thank you, Ken. Scott, when you're ready. Well, that's a, that's a tough act to follow. Thanks a lot, Ken. I appreciate <laughs> it. <laughs> well, well, I'm going to be a little more old school because I wasn't given a, a nice book when I finished. Um, so I don't have any slides, so you'll just have to kind of bear with me. Um, I was Rotary president uh, years 2006, 2007. Um, I joined uh, Rotary in August of 94. Um, with under the great leadership of Ken Baker. Um, and I'd be remiss if I didn't say my sponsor at that time uh, was the late Rupert Bliss. Um, without Rupert, um, I probably never would have been exposed to Rotary. So I owe him a, a debt of gratitude. And as each of you all in the club today, I'm sure know who your sponsor was and, and you should be thanking uh, him or her, or whoever brought you in. Um, because they did you a great favor. And uh, just like we always talk about sponsoring other people to come in so that they have the same benefits and, and, uh, and joy of Rotary that, that you've all experienced. Um, the Probably the most notable person that uh, was um, inducted during my year uh, was Ike Sherlock. Um, the, um, and Ike is going to continue to go on to bigger and better things. And, and um, uh, so that was certainly an honor to uh, be president when, when he joined the club. A um, couple of other things I'd like to talk about is um, um, during my year, One second. Had a couple of um, interesting things that occurred. Um, one was that uh, my vice president was transferred. Um, from Jacksonville to Atlanta, Florida. It was Larry, Larry Gill. Um, so we were kind of uh, at that time uh, without a president or without a vice president and president to be. Um, my board at the time was uh, Mike Crumpler was treasurer, uh, John Runyon was secretary, and then Frank Shy was sergeant at arms. Um, and we, we were wondering at the time, what, what are we gonna do? Um, when I left as far as who would be president. Um, and fortunately, uh, many, many, many years earlier, uh, Tommy Platt had kind of dropped out of the lineage to become president, to be kind of a wild card just in case, because the bylaws basically state that you have to be uh, treasurer and, um, and VP in order to um, assume the presidency. So that's why we couldn't just move Mike Crumpler up to be president. Um, so Tommy Platt, as a matter of fact, stepped in the following year and uh, took over to, uh, to run the club and, and Tommy did a great job. Um, the, probably the most, the biggest accomplishment of, of my year that, that I'm most proud of was uh, uh, the Miracle Ball League. And, um, ballpark that's on the west side today. Um, and those of you who aren't familiar with the uh, Miracle League ballpark, uh, it's a ball field that um, has a tartan surface that allows uh, boys and girls in wheelchairs uh, to be able to play baseball. Um, when that first idea was approached to me, I had no idea 
the, the ramifications and the number of folks it would in, impact over the years. Um, this was an idea that was born in uh, Barcelona uh, when past presidents uh, Michael Corgan Jr. and our own Phil Voss uh, were attending the Rotary Convention in Barcelona. And the two of those gentlemen got together and decided, hey, this would be an incredible project. Uh, why don't we bring it back to Jacksonville? Uh, well, they tried for years, but the problem was the stars hadn't aligned and we could never get the proper permitting to permit us to build the ballpark. Um, well, I remember at President's Night, uh, was I in February before I became president, um, Michael Corgan Jr. came to me and said, Scott, if you're still interested in pursuing this, he says, I'm going to be city council president. And he says, I think we can get these uh, permits through. So that's what happened. Uh, Michael uh, became city council president and um, the stores aligned and um, we got the permits. So now that we had the permitting, all we had to do was come up with a couple hundred thousand dollars. Um, so that's where Phil Voss came in. And um, Phil was uh, placed in charge of fundraising for the Miracle Ball League. Um, and if you've ever been around Phil, you know Phil can get money out of anybody. And, um, and we ended up receiving over $150,000 in in-kind contributions uh, from members of our club. Everything from grading of the property to uh, placement of rock to drainage, bleachers, fencing, lighting, you name it, Phil got it donated. Um, the, um, but then the push came to shove toward the end. It was like we had one part, one thing that was really the sticking point, and that was we needed about $75,000, $80,000 for this tartan surface uh, to put down. And without the tartan surface, um, the ballpark just would never uh, been completed. Uh, and it was only due to a very generous gift from Catherine Brantley uh, that allowed the project to be finished. And then the ballpark was named in honor of her husband, Lou Brantley. Um, and as a, as a special note, uh, for those of you who weren't around when Lou was here, um, Lou is an incredible man with whose accolades uh, were too numerous to mention. Uh, but his one big passion was he loved children. And he was a Shriner um, and was around kids with special needs all the time. And so Catherine felt that it was only fitting uh, to donate the money to honor her husband's lifelong work and passion. Uh, so for any of you who go out to the ballpark, you'll see this beautiful bronze plaque uh, behind the uh, home plate um, uh, with Lou's face and, and name on it. And it it's very fitting. Uh, the other person who was really uh, instrumental in, in what went on was uh, Craig Hartwig. Uh, and Craig was in charge of overseeing this enormous project. Um, I think he was probably on site daily or at least several times a week. Um, and it, without his hard work, as well as uh, Phil's and the generosity of, of Catherine Brantley, the project never would have come been completed. Um, and as an aside, um, uh, President Mary Pat uh, mentioned a few weeks ago, that the club has applied for and been granted a district grant to help refurbish the Miracle Ball League. Um, it's just another example of the good works of Rotary and uh, some of the benefits that uh, the community has, has continued to gain from that uh, Miracle Ball League uh, with the leagues that they hold and, and uh, the kids that have never had the opportunity to play baseball uh, get to do that. Uh, one final thing I'd like to uh, mention is, uh, especially for the new Rotarians, is the difference between, uh, there's two awards that we typically give at the end of every year. Uh, one is the Robert Shercliffe Award, uh, which is usually given to the outstanding um, service to the club by a non-officer or director. Um, I'm sorry, the, for community unrelated to the uh, Rotary activities and the J.J. McCraney Award, which is outstanding service to the club by a non-officer or director. And in my year, the two award winners were uh, the Robert Shercliffe Award were Michael Corrigan Jr. Um, 
and uh, JJ McCraney Award was uh, Craig Harper. Um, that's pretty much wrapping it up. Uh, again, as Ken mentioned, probably one of the, the uh, best years of my life was uh, leading our club. Um, I, anyone who ever has the opportunity, I would, I would recommend most highly to take the bull by the horn and um, uh, get in, in line and in and, and the uh, uh, service above self. And as I said, regardless of the amount of hard work, you will always look on it as, as one of the best times of your life. So with that, I'll conclude and thank you very much. Thank you both. That's absolutely fantastic.